It's time now for the latest installment of our NewsHour New York Times Book Club. Now read this. Jeffrey Brown has our conversation. Heartbreak, heart attack, heart transplant. It's an organ that, yes, is at the heart of our health and emotional life and the subject of centuries of medical research. It's also the subject of our January book club selection, Heart, a History. Author Dr. Sandeep Johar is here to answer some of the questions our readers sent in. And first, welcome and thanks for doing this with us. Thank you for having me. Give us an overview of what you are after. You're looking at uh, the heart as metaphor, as mechanics, as science. What are you, what were you doing? I've always been fascinated by the human heart, uh, and so I wanted to write about it. And the, my fascination sort of stems from three reasons, really. One is that uh, I have a malignant family history of heart disease. Uh, my grandfather, my paternal grandfather, died uh, when, um, when my father was only 14, years before I was born. I never met him. And his death really affected my father and, by extension, all of us as I was growing up. So. Um, so the family history played a role. Um, I'm also just fascinated by the fact that the heart is just such an amazing machine. It's really the most amazing machine that nature has devised. I mean, it's, it's a machine that pumps three billion times in a typical mm -hmm. human lifetime. And finally, I was just really fascinated, and I learned this more as I was researching the book, by the history of heart discovery. You know, the heart had never been operated on up until the end of the 19th century. Uh, it's just, it's an organ that has unique challenges mm -hmm. to surgical manipulation. It's, it's always moving mm -hmm. and it's filled with blood. So how do you operate on it? So that history was, was one I really wanted to explore in the book. Okay, so let's go to some of the questions from our readers. What is your favorite heart metaphor? The favorite heart metaphor. So this is how you start the book. Yeah. Because this is what I started with, heartbreak yeah. and heart, right. uh, yeah. I would say that, um, I mean, there are a number I can think of, but probably take heart. Take heart. Take heart. And the reason why, it's, it's sort of what my father, it was like his pre prescription for living. Mm -hmm. You know, after his father died, my grandfather, um, they, there was really no, no one, um, you know, leading the home mm -hmm. uh, back in, you know, 1950s India. And uh, my father would go, uh, he started going to college and he would walk home, you know, the family was... Mm -hmm. indigent, and my grandmother would tell him, del himatkar, which is take heart, have courage. And so um, because it's so cross-cultural, yeah. I would say take heart. Okay, let's go to the second question. How much does the emotional state affect the functioning of the heart? The emotional state affect the functioning of the heart. A lot of people wonder about yeah. this, right? And you write much yeah. about it. So we know that the emotions affect the heart in, in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, acute emotional disruption um, can change the heart shape. Um, why emotional stress would cause the heart to change shape? I mean, it's just, it's fascinating and it's really a mystery. Uh, so there's no question that the emotions, acute emotional dis uh, disruption can affect the heart and chronic emotional disruption. We know that people in difficult relationships with their children, with their spouses, who have a lot of occupational stress mm -hmm. develop premature heart disease. All right, let's go to our next question. I'm wondering what you foresee as the next major challenge or barrier to overcome in coronary and cardiac medicine. Well, so much of the book, of course, is yes. about the, the decades, yeah. centuries of yeah. research. Yeah. yeah. Where are we now? What's next? Yeah. Uh, there's no question that uh, we have, you know, that cardiology is really one of the great success stories of the 20th century. For example, when coronary angiography was invented in 1958, uh, the uh, mortality from a heart attack was about 30% in hospital mortality. Mm -hmm. Now it's about 3%. Huh. So how much lower can we go? Right. I think, and I advocate in the book, that the next step in heart disease and in coronary disease is really focusing on the emotions, how we live, uh, because that really is an area that's been relatively underexplored. It's just, it's so much easier for cardiologists to prescribe a pill to lower cholesterol than it is to lower social and emotional disruption. So I would say that the next step is really focus, focusing on our emotional lives. Okay, I think we've got time for one more and it actually goes to this, some of these uh, issues you were just talking about. What is one change to the standard American diet 
that would have the greatest impact in reducing heart disease? Okay, so there's the question everybody wants to know, oh, right? That's, uh, and you started yeah. with your own personal story. Yeah, so. that's... Yeah. Uh, so, so what should people do? In the book, I talk about um, uh, when I learned that I myself have heart disease. And, uh, you know, I was living a pretty healthy life, and I was exercising. And uh, I would say that the best information we have at this point, uh, to be perfectly practical, mm -hmm. is to follow a Mediterranean diet. Um, that's a diet that's rich in olive oil, in, uh, in fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. a little bit of wine, whole grains, fish, kind of a, what Michael Pollan advocates, uh, which is his three prescriptions for right. a good diet, right. is, is eat food, right. which means food that your mother or your grandmother would recognize as food, not too much, mostly plants. All right. As always, we'll continue with our questions and have the full conversation on our Now Read This Facebook page. For now, Sandeep Johar, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And let me announce our February pick. We're returning to fiction with a tie to the Oscars coming up at the end of next month. The Wife is a novel by best-selling author Meg Wolitzer about a Nobel Prize winning writer with a big secret. The film version came out last year, and the great Glenn Close picked up an Oscar nomination for Best Actress. Join us, read along, discuss the book and more with other readers on our Facebook page. It's all part of Now Read This, our book club partnership with The New York Times.